Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mega Squirt build. And in the last video, we got our fuel system all finished up and we've been working on a few other things such as the harness and whatnot. But uh, in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the ignition system. So we're gonna be getting our spark plugs in, kind of dealing with the coils and the custom spark plug lines. We'll do the distributor delete kit with the uh, crank angle sensor, the new trigger, trigger wheel, and probably a few other things here and there. Um, but like I said, uh, first up, we're going to start with our spark plugs. So what we're going to be using, I mentioned this in our last video, uh, we're going to be using the NGK BKR uh, 7Es. And these are going to be uh, one heat range colder than your typical spark plug. And I've gone ahead and gapped them all to 0 0.025. That's kind of the range that the tuner recommended. And I talked to a few others and that seems about normal. Um, so first thing with a Z31, specifically the VG30, when it comes to doing spark plugs, you really need to get a compressor or a very good vacuum with a fine tip because down here in these little valleys, a lot of dirt and sand accumulates. And if you just take out the spark plug without cleaning it out, all that crap is going to fall into your cylinders. So we don't want that. So I'm going to go get my uh, compressor. We're going to blow everything out, clean it up, maybe get the vacuum as well to, uh, just to make sure everything's clean. And then I'll get the spark plugs put in. Uh, I'll kind of speed through that since it's a pretty simple job. Anybody should be able to do it with a little bit of time. And then once those are finished up, we'll get our coil packs mounted over there. And I'll kind of go into detail on the bracket and kind of how it's made. And then we can get started on custom making our spark plug lines. We're going to be crimping on the ends, uh, putting the terminals on and everything, and just routing them to look super clean. So stay tuned for that, guys, and let's get started. All right, so I quickly got the spark plugs in. Those are all torqued down and ready to go. And now we're going to move on to our coil packs. So um, I quickly talked about this in the parts video, but I did make this uh, last year in anticipation for this just to save me some time because it did take some planning and a little bit of um, time to get everything how I wanted it. But pretty much we have six LS coils here. Um, I made this aluminum bracket to kind of hold them. Um, this whole unit is meant to sit right here on top of the brake booster. And uh, just before we put it in, I'll give you a little bit more details on it. So um, we have, yeah, this aluminum bracket here. All the hardware is going to be stainless steel. And then right in between here, I just have these stainless steel kind of like bushings to space them out. They're not actually sitting on top of each other. There is a little bit of a gap in there. I'm not sure if that's important or not, but I was fine with it. Um, we have these little rubber standoffs on the bottom to kind of help prevent the entire thing from kind of um, bending when you tighten it down, tighten it down because uh, since the aluminum isn't the strongest, it did kind of warp a bit, but that kind of uh, prevented it a little bit. And um, yeah, so like I said, that's going to be going over here. Um, I did riv nut into the firewall, into the firewall here where they're going to go. Um, you've seen me use the Rivnut tool a lot and it's been such a big help in this little project so I recommend one a lot if you plan on uh, doing stuff like this but we'll just quickly test fit it in here it's gonna sit right on top get everything out of the way and just like that so I'll put the bolts in for that and then um, we'll talk about the spark plug wires and we'll start laying them out on top of the engine and we'll get those cut to length and crimped. All right, so we got the coil packs mounted to the firewall. I don't think they're coming out anymore. They're gonna stay here until uh, we're ready for tuning. Um, also, before I put them in, I also routed the harness kind of between the booster and the master here. And underneath the bracket 
and then they come out over here near the clutch reservoir and basically they're just gonna sit and kind of tuck behind the coils and they'll plug in like that and it's gonna be nice and stealth you won't even be able to see the harness really um, I didn't really plan on that I just happened to find that out right now yeah, just a coincidence and that's what I'm gonna stick with um, so now with that done we're gonna focus on <clears throat> the uh, spark plug wires so here's the kit that i showed you guys in the parts video earlier it's just the jegs kind of universal ls version um so i gotta show you guys how to crimp and uh pretty much terminate the plug wires because they're all different lengths we're gonna have to uh, measure them up and uh, kind of route them over there to the corner and um there's a few specialty tools that we're gonna need and uh, i'm just gonna put the camera on a tripod right now and i'll go over them with you Okay, so um, I'm going to show you guys quickly how to uh, crimp and terminate some plug wires. Um, this is just an old one I have. It's not the ones that I took off of my car earlier. This is just like an OEM one. It's kind of garbage. Um, so pretty much what we're going to do, um, you're going to measure them out. This one is just whatever. So let's just say we want it here. We're just going to use some side cutters and we'll cut it off. Nice, straight, clean cut. Um, next up, we're going to have to uh, strip back some of the insulation and that's where this tool comes in. Uh, this is a spark plug crimping tool. It has the crimpers and the strippers built into the jaws. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the plug wire through the strippers, um, usually about three quarter inches. Um, I'll let you know in a second, but you just bottom them out and you pull, and then it leaves just the little core part. That's what you want. Um, next up, we have our uh, terminal end. This is just a, this is not the ones I'm going to be using. This is just an extra one that came in the kit. But you're going to want to bend down the core and tuck it underneath, just like that. And then the uh, bottom of the end is going to seat right on top of it like that, so that the core part is kind of um, just s underneath. It's kind of uh, stuck down there. And then we're going to get our crimpers and we're going to crimp these closed and that's going to lock everything together. Now this can be a little bit tricky sometimes. You really got to line everything up right. I like to get the, uh, the terminal kind of in the jaws first. Let me try that. So I've got them kind of uh, lined up in there. And then we'll grab our wire again and we'll slip it in until it's just past the uh, end there. And then we give it a little squeeze, and we bottom the tool out, and it release, and there we go. We have some nice crimped, solid connection on the end. You see a little bit of the core, uh, the core wire coming out the end. That's perfectly fine. This is all going to be covered with a boot anyways. Um, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing to all six of the wires. Um, the kit is actually meant for a V8, so we're going to have eight wires. I'm just going to pick the closest length ones that uh, suit what I need. And then the uh, terminal ends that I'm going to be using are going to be a LS style one. They're a little bit different than your standard distributor ones, so you just got to make sure you order the right ones. And then for the terminal boots, I'm going to be using these um, 45 degree ends. They just slide on like this and then they'll have enough clearance for the spark plug wire to kind of um, clear everything over there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to set the camera on record and I'll get through all six of them and I'll catch up with you guys when I have some progress done.
Okay, so we just finished up with our spark plug wires. That was a pretty big job, but surprisingly went very smoothly. As you can see, everything's lined up, goes around back and over there to our coils. I'll give you guys a closer look in just a second. Um, it is starting to look a little busy under here, but um, that's just because the harness still has a few clips that are just chilling on top. Eventually those will get tucked around and go to where they need to go. But if we start over on this side, we have our three plug wires for the passenger side. Um, they hang up a little bit, but I can always pull them a little tighter, bring them lower. Those go over here and underneath our fuel lines, and then they kind of branch off over there. And if we come over to the driver's side, same thing, we have our spark plug wires that are nicely tucked in down by the lower intake manifold. Just ignore all these wires for now. And then they come around and then over here to our big junction of electronics. So like I said, uh, right now we have the um, harnesses plugged into all the coils and it tucks nicely behind there and you can't even see them when you're looking at it head on. So really happy with how that turned out. Um, all the plug wires have uh, numbers on them that kind of came with the kit. I might take them off later, not really sure how I like the look of it, but for now it's good just for reference. And um, yeah, everything nicely fits back there. Still got to clean up some things. There's some uh, wire separators that the kit came with that I'm probably going to use. But um, yeah, for now, everything looks great. And we're one big step closer. And uh, now we're going to move on to the uh, distributor and the trigger wheel that's at the bottom. So we're going to pull everything apart and get that installed. And then when we're putting everything back together, we're going to uh, put our distributor delete kit on to kind of uh, compact everything. Um, I do have a video on how to change the um, crank angle sensor, which is going to be very similar to what we're doing right now. So I'm going to just fly through this. Um, if you want to see the full video, I'll put it up here in the corner. And then, um, yeah. Oh, one quick thing to note, uh, as you saw in the previous clip, I used a uh, multimeter to check the resistance of all the wires just to make sure all the contacts were good. And um, yeah, you want to see somewhere between around below 2500 ohms, I'd say is pretty good for new spark plug wires. The highest I think I saw on this one was 1800, which was for the longest line. So the longer the line, the more resistance you have. But it's just a good check to make sure you did a good job. Um, yeah, that's all finished up guys and we'll move on to the distributor. Just finished putting the delete cap back on the distributor and I love it. It is super compact and slim and uh, I painted it gloss black to kind of match with the rest of the engine bay. Um, there's a nice flat spot right on top so it would be pretty cool to actually have some sort of engraving here one day. Uh, maybe I'll look into that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we're pretty much finished up with our ignition system. We got the cap and delete kit back on. All of our custom plug wires are routed. We have our coils mounted and everything's plugged in over there. Um, maybe a couple small things here and there that I still got to do, but we're super close guys. In the next video, we'll probably start going over some of the wiring, um, all the sensors and stuff. I'll show you guys how that's all routed and kind of where everything goes. Um, we'll get the ECU in, we'll probably start pinning some stuff and, um, yeah, just another step closer guys and, uh, keep it posted to the channel. You'll be sure to get lots and lots of info in the next few days. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.